Good evening, my friends. Welcome to another talk on Gaia humanism. Today is February 10th. A lot of things are happening in the world. A lot of things, uh, very interesting, very, very interesting turn of events in a lot of places. I'm going to explain something that is crucial to making us more capable of understanding how to resolve uh, social, political issues, arguments. It's called the um, the existential condition of everything. The existential condition of everything, basically, is an explanation for humanity's predicament and why um, why things happen. The reason for all our problems. We talk about all our institutional, political issues, social issues, fights, we argue, we um, lie, we uh, manipulate, cheat, deceive, uh, and then we, as countries, as people, we feel our institutions um, are uh, treat us wrongly or, um, or aren't uh, earnest, aren't sincere, aren't, are inhuman, or what have you. Our countries treat other countries the same way, and so the world continues to argue and fight, um, war, manipulate, deceit, and a whole bunch of other um, things that we have we have assumed is the the natural state of humanity, uh, a troubled, belligerent world where we have uh, few and far between moments of uh, peace and grace that eventually will be will uh, be caught up by um, you know um, upheaval once again well um, there's a reason for it there's a reason why humanity civilization is uh, experience experiences this uh, existential condition and it's not too hard to understand now it's um, It's not a formula by which to change or to apply uh, to problems, app apply at problems, apply at problems, um, but visualizing, and it is a little bit of a uh, architectural model-like uh, sort of um, design, spatial design, a visualization of forms, if you will. Um, to understand this and once you're able to visualize these dynamics in three-dimensional space um, we we can better um, we can have a, a better grip on the any chaotic uh, or incomprehensive or contradictory um, problem dispute or conflict that the world or countries are having or maybe um, social arguments, social causes and, and disagreements and beliefs that fight against other people's beliefs on issues like uh, what have you, any kind of social civil issue um, that are so common uh, in the world today too, especially in, in, um, in, you know, in the English speaking world we have m loaded our citizens and, and, and this has permeated into the rest of the West with um, with a, a need or a, a, an entitlement to argue our our uh, natural definitions as human beings. We argue about things like abortion and sexuality that really have never been issues in the world so much. We just simply were the species we were. And um, now we have made um, um, an issue of reinventing, of redesigning the human species. Um, because we have seen that we are able to do things to ourselves um, through sciences and biology and, I mean, so biological and scientific intelligence. So I think this has uh, woken up the, the idea that we can cyber transform ourselves and 
sort of in a in a analogous kind of way, a funny way to think of. I mean, um, in any case, so we have a whole host of new problems, and all of these, all of these can be explained by the um, the reason for the the reason uh, of our um, our existential condition is the way it is. Okay, I'm going to pause a second and I am going to get into it. Okay, the reason of everything for our existential condition. The reason of everything is the title I have finally come up with. Um, humanity, civilization, and all our, our inventions of institutions, countries, and all our writings, all our intelligent, academic, literatures, scientific, and philosophical or spiritual literatures, they're all our creation, right? We have created everything we have written and everything we have constructed and invented, whether it be a country, whether it be a science, a medicine, um, or an institution, it's all part of our creative genius to assist ourselves in uh, living living better, living uh getting, uh, you know, making existence easier and confronting the challenges that most threaten us or that we most fear and um, and make life easier, in other words, as they commonly say. Okay, this let's just call this human civilization. Uh, um, it is, all of it, you can imagine, if you can imagine a world and people populating it over over its entire sphere we are two aspects of existence the physical uh, invented by mankind reality and the natural world I don't say physical world because I want to make a difference. I want to make a distinction. We have normally come to believe that the world is made up of uh, mind and matter, spirit, and materialism or material, uh, the material world and spirituality. And so we see things that we, we associate the body, the human body with the material world and then we think of the spiritual world, world, which is everything that's sort of esoteric. And in any case, this uh, perception is not is it doesn't serve anything. Doesn't really help <laughs> help understand our condition, our human condition, much at all. In reality, we need to understand it as the natural world, which means everything that is the impulse of creation. Our um, and it has no lines, it has no, it's not fixed, it's not static in any way, it's, it's an expression of life, creation, light, evolution, um, planetary matter stimulated to change unstoppably. Uh, on this natural aspect, or the natural half, let's call it, or sphere or something, um, our bodies are part of our body. Our, our bodies are part of this. Our natural psychology, not the psychology that involves reasoning and logic, that is is stimulated and produced by by education, by learning, by reading, by what the world has taught us, uh, so far as how to think about things. But the natural part of our brain that suddenly feels fear or feels happy, joy, hunger, um, un you know, antsiness, you want to get up and do something, motivation, all the parts that are the natural psychology of the mind, our body, and the natural world, the planet, animals, the weather, it's all a single natural uh, expression of life. Within it, of course, appears our capacity. But we'll say that our capacity and the world we look, uh, if we look around us in the world, the, um, 
the expression of the physical or material, or I call uh, also static, is pretty much all man-made. There's very little that the natural world has produced in so far as constructions, and it certainly hasn't done any writing. So we live in our own constructions. And so existence is divided in the aspect of um, the natural world and the physical world. But when I say the physical world, I'm talking about the static, hard, recorded, unchanging, uh, fixed world. And so that aspect of civilization would be uh, the buildings we make, the sciences that we establish our discoveries, we give it a name and we say how to, what it does and we define why it does what it does in sciences or we build buildings or we design institutions, we create countries and we make railways and all of that, all of that is the material aspect or the material um, dimension also. I'm not too sure how to define these two in so far as categories because it's almost like a sphere overlapping and occupying the same space of another sphere and so if anybody has some good uh, categorizing words uh, we can say aspects I suppose uh, to human existence two made two fundamental aspects to human existence so we have the natural expression uh, of which the um, material aspect of existence has uh, cannot really affect I mean it, it's not um, it won't it doesn't need to affect the natural world in other words though the natural aspect or the natural world gave birth to the physical world to the hard material world and later uses it and serves it and, and lives with it it could exist without it the world will continue to be without us on it and without us our inventions and without everything that we bring to it um, the while the physical material aspect of human civilization would not exist if it wasn't for the natural aspect of civilization so and in this is uh, basically the reason is because humankind, mankind creates the material natural aspect of existence, of human existence. So it's almost like we produce our own shell, like if we were a, cra a little snail, sea snail or something, we create our own shell, we produce it, uh, we secrete it, uh, but then we become that. And human existence is the fusion the uh, the oneness of our uh, human civilization not human so much as human existence but human civilization um, or, or human existence in his civilization is the fusion of these two aspects okay now there's a relation once you can really identify the difference I mean, if you look around you you can see everything and however you define it or what you see or what you identify where is its natural aspect or natural dimension and where it's is its physical or material dimension these two for example paint the color the perception of color is a result of my eyeballs my iris and the or whatever the you know whatever happens inside the brain and the, 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 the pigments that have made it to the paint that have naturally been able to give the color, even if uh, eventually mass-produced industrially, but they were drawn from nature to create these colors. Um, and so in their origin, we see that ex origin encapsulated in the paint that painted my walls. And the aspect that I can see it and read it, but the... Uh, the production of the latex is primarily thanks to the material world. It's, all of it is fused. Existence of these two dimensions are fused. Yet, they, they are discernible. You can always see how 
our existence is a fusion of these two aspects of of our human existence and so these two aspects have a relation between them they affect each other it's almost like something you carry with you because in fact I mean indeed we um, for example fall in love uh, we think of words that ins are inspired and we think of a song maybe find words for it and that moment of inspiration as artists know um, happens very much along the, the, the moving of the natural experience in other words you, you get really good at producing that melody and those words as you're living but if you think about it if you just start cooking and all of a sudden your friend comes to the door you may not create such beauty um, later in the day it's very much part of our uh, mo almost all of it except for the engineering of the language that gave us the words uh, educated us in being able to produce the words in our thought but most of it is the natural movement momentum of the organic or natural aspect of humanity when we write it down and we write down the poem and the song all of a sudden it's written on a piece of paper now I can always read it again later in the day and it won't be forgotten so the the physical reality the material aspect of existence is intended to assist us is is, is a production a natural production of the of human capacity we mean uh, we, we, it comes from life <laughs> although immediately it can be the wrong invention as we well know but um, the intention is to help life is to assist life is to serve life in the case of a poem it's pretty much a hundred percent good later um, um, ten years from now I um, will feel in love again perhaps and think of be thinking that I'm in love and then read that poem let's say somebody else wrote and it will maybe uh, complement enrich or or not do justice to the love I'm feeling but it will still have a it will have a relation to what I'm, I'm feeling the, in the natural existence in other words our um, it is ours our material aspect of civilization walks with us in life comes with us but is unchanging and so if you can imagine um, sort of carrying a, a little a shopping cart or one of those little things on wheels that people take at the airports there's their luggage on you always carry it with you if it's close to the moment of invention it's pretty much there there's very little relationship you could you immediately use it for the reason you made it but we like Carl <laughs> what was his name the comedian we take our stuff with us humanity takes us stuff his stuff with it and so we um, end up with a world of things that we have been carrying with us and like it or not they continue to be fused we, they continue to make our world but um, continue to uh, make possible that relationship of the natural aspect to the physical aspect of human existence and it, that relationship is always capable of being analyzed and it could all it could, is always capable of being good or all of a sudden not being good enough or being inadequate or being harmful because it doesn't change we change we move forward and as we learn we take the consciousness of the new things the world has taught us and our experiences have taught us new ways of dealing with um, society with ourselves in the world with how we inter how we interpret life and how we experience life and that is all part of the um, some of the reasoning is part of what how we've been educated to think but a lot of the motivation this is what I'm getting at 
the the motivator is the original motivator is within us we always carry that original desire to have to think about something for example and how we or what what mood sparked that starting to need to think about something in our in the d depth of our natural psychology and that always travels with us and we immediately as human beings engage our our shell our <laughs> this this uh, artificial home that we have built around us in, in word and, and wall um, and engineering and science um, to continue the experience in resolving or manifesting what we want to life uh, for, we want to see happen in life so um, it doesn't seem like I'm getting to a conclusion but it's important to understand the, this, the ability to discern one and the other and it's Im most important to understand that what life is what human existential what, hu the, what humankind's ex existential condition is is the relationship that, that happens between these two things so if for example, if I put my glasses here, you will think something about me. And it's thanks to the fact that you're seeing a human being and the fact that his glasses are here. If I put him here, you will think something else. What you think is motivated by an initial spark that is your necessity to relate and, and have a... Uh, a thought about another human being such as yourself let's say and whether it is good or bad or gives you a, what it makes you think or it doesn't make you think may have to do with uh, with how you have been taught to think about people judge people uh, view people um, what sorts of things what what your your um, your set of vocabulary and language um, uh, notions are stored in your head but the experience of even thinking is always a fusion of these two and the physical world is these glasses and that I'm able to move these glasses are is always a constant fusion of physical and natural world now, when it comes to a larger scale, like um, the, a society's relationship to the institutions of a country, or people's relationships to institutions uh, and their country, or a country relation, a country's relation to the people of another country or to another country, it's a lot easier to not get too bogged into where you discern things because most of the thinking in another country's culture the, the street talk what people say are um is very is much closer to the the human living experience while the decisions of government leaders um take are closer to what they studied and what they were taught they needed to believe if they wanted to govern a country or if they wanted to be good politicians what have you at university and so when they get to government then they find a whole very rigid status quo of functioning of administration that they have to adhere by and the whole experience I mean this continues they live also the the fusion of these two sides they maybe had the impulse to manifest ideals and and really be and then many are ultimately um, most if not most are ultimately uh, succumb to um, the uh, the structure of the physical material world that is actually um, part of that enforcement happens by other people that want you to conform and and so before you know it, they're acting very, very much like 
the uh, what the what the design of the government of the laws of the structure of administration has has been like for unchanging for years and uh, they're not really every day waking up and seeing let's see what America is like today you know and seeing they're not really aware anymore of, they have to be told movements are coming up and change and they have to notice it they have to see it deduce it from maybe a TV or some kind of information um, and all of a sudden, but they're always late into what is happening because the people are actually closer to the day-to-day uh, -day changing of, um, well, they are the, the producers, of the, the people are the producers of, of the country, in a sense. And we all conform to the structures that we uh, agree to uh, adhere by. It's sort of like we create uh, a benevolent cage of sorts, a cage you can open supposedly at any given time, uh, but we in any case decide to put ourselves inside that shelter and um, and so the state of the of countries is such that we forget that we were the creators for our own well-being of that structure and um, you know, we just start, start blindly kind of feeling we need to obey it and it's very complex. Now, um, but the important thing is that uh, that I'm trying to get at is how um, the feelings about each other as peoples in different countries um, travel with the living, breathing, day-to-day -day experience. In other words, if you keep hearing that, for example, these people are, are all crooks, mm -hmm. let's say, in that country, um, and it's written down in magazines and whatever, and then people read it again and, and you know, or, or hear it on a TV show, it always goes back to the living experience. So when you talk to people and, and somebody introduces you to somebody from that country, you are in much, very much in the living organic ex aspect of experience because you, you're going to have your first thoughts about somebody you, you just met. When they tell you they're from that country, again, you are fed, uh, you're inducted to, um, induced uh, to have prejudices because those prejudices are proliferated, but then those prejudices become also a, a way in which it, they, they become governed mainly by the living aspect because you will have a, a, a relationship with that new friend but they will always be from that country and so even though the prejudice is fed by a continuing um, administration of um, of um, prejudiced, prejudiced notions transferred by media or writing the experience of the country will be a society that treats those people uh, in their day-to-day -day spontaneous living situations, friendships, parties, work, what have you, with those ideas of prejudice. So it will become predominantly the living reality of that society to have prejudices against that person, be be those people that come from that country of crooks. So you have an advance that is on, in the sphere of the living, the, the swoop of constantly living, potentially sub, uh, spontaneously able to correct because the living aspect of, of, of uh, human existence governs ultimately the, the overall direction of of humanity, civilization, of, of, of human, of the human condition. We, it's like we make uh, an apparatus that we put ahead of us, that, which tells us where to go, but we are the ones holding it and we designed that, that, that carrot and stick that we put in front of us. So uh, it never ceases to be us, the originators. We just don't know how to pull back that, um, that, that stick with the carrot dangling in front of it and throw it out and do something different. 
we are unable to have flexibility and versatility in our institutions and governments and why we think the things we do once we've written down we think uh, once they're written down we think they're holy we can't touch the things we write the, the systems we design uh, the, you know because it, basically because we also fail to discern that our beliefs are also part of the material world they come from that physical world because we wrote down words that we later read again and we don't realize that the physical world won't change unless we change it so if we leave a book as we know we've left books there for many centuries and we continue to read that book and not say wait a second we have to tell everybody this book is just a collection of of, of ancient stories that were used by a group of religious people who decided to make it their their book of teachings and now it's we have made it sacred, but really we made it. If we don't change it, it's not, nobody's going to change it. We are unable to have, to be, to feel empowered um, upon our own invention of civilization, our own material creation or the, as the material, physical aspect of humanity. We, we, we kind of make it and then leave it there and then we look at it like, ooh, what should I do with it? Who made that? <laughs> we made it. <laughs> you know, who made? It? Should not? Don't touch it. You know, it's a product of our intelligence. Um, so, we have never known an ownership of our material, physical world as a human civilization. But it's probably high time that we realize we are free to um, to own uh, our own material aspect of civilization our physical world and uh, we're very free to invent a different form of glasses maybe hanging from somewhere else instead of sitting on the nose although I thought about that for a while I think you kind of can't perfect this design any more than it has but a lot of things are, are perfect are can be perfected and changed chucked and something else not done you know we are free to uh, to design the physical world that we make. Okay, so the problem is that there's, uh, so what I was describing before is that there's a relation between, uh, let's take this guy that was between these two aspects of civilization. Let's take this guy that came from the country of crooks. Um, it basically explains to us how it is that we um, continue to think, for example, that uh, a little Islamic uh, fanatical country that's not hurting anybody but uh, has some very popular dictator that somehow our media started saying that it was he was dictatorial and you know and who said that? Well, the media was informed by um, by whatever government provided information there's something there I forget I, I once learned about that how the there's a connection of medias with 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 the state this official information and what parameters or something and one person has to satisfy the other and the other one if you know ultimately we're all trying to satisfy the person at the top of the pyramid and, and, the, and that media network I, I don't know I forgot all about it that was so many years ago I, I read about that but um, so we come to say in the media in the media that a bunch of things we start uh, in the new in that <laughs> given media what did I say <laughs> anyways <laughs> um, we'll start talking about that newly appearing little country with the now supposed dictator in ways that are governed by a, a bunch of prejudices that we've been bringing with us and um, it then becomes easier to think uh, certain newly introduced physical world assertions like uh, they have a, a, a you know a, a poisonous dart industry <laughs> that they you know we consider a risk to national security <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this um, <laughs> but um, you know there really isn't a conclusion and I'm about to finish now because there isn't a conclusion but if you understand this concept you uh, and this, it's not a concept it's really the way 
civilization continues living. This is how, this is our human, the reason of our, uh, of all things that happen to us as a civilization, basically. It's this relationship of the, our two aspects, our two existential aspects. Um, and once you see it clearly that we're basically the, we continue to pro pro propagate and proliferate um, things that the material aspect of our civilization uh, dastardly continues to not be able to change and, and continue to send forward. Um, although we as human beings would probably by now already realize that a lot of things that are of wiser caliber and understand that all people are the same in any country and if a country is seeking to defend itself it's probably the same reason including ourselves are seeking to defend ourselves uh, to themselves and so um, that simple logic would be had in just a, a, at a conversation at a table with friends and uh, in, 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 in the living reality actually is held the wiser more intelligent vanguard of understanding our existence um, but because we don't have a, a grip on the relationship between these two aspects and therefore we don't have the notion of urgency in adjusting and correcting our um, the, the damaging uh, behavior of our physical world we are impotent we don't do anything about it we we are unable we don't do anything about it we're unaware that this is how humanity works and so we uh, as a collective we would always you know at a table of friends we would uh, who know a lot about and they there there's a lot of love and familiarity and friendship and and everybody's really comfortable and they're ta we're talking about many countries and how things are and I don't know how many of you remember this as kids listening to grown-ups but you all of a sudden hear wow you know my my parents and their friends they, they really if only governors could if only presidents and nations would find ways of analyzing resolving and proposing better ideas to end these problems you think to yourself as a kid right uh, it's true uh, people in a free collective environment can be more benevolent, more uh, if, if they feel safe, if there is friendship, if there is um, trust in a general in the atmosphere created by by this collective uh, sort of well-being uh, in each other's company, uh, you will see that intelligence becomes more benevolent. The more we adhere to, you ought to believe this. You know, the Russians will always, you know, commies and and that are dictators and fascists and da, da 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 and they did that to cover up their real pro pro problems you know they they use that uh, to to distract attention from and all these sort of uh, over-the-counter um, analysis and judgments on the same situation that your parents friends were resolving before also and everybody's condemning because they're very adhered there's no camaraderie, friendship, togetherness at that dinner table. There's uh, no benevolence, no, no trust, no happiness. Of the, everybody's very sort of formal and rigid, and they have to go by what needs to be believed. And so there's a, a uh, or needs to be thought, because authority institution is teaching that, and that's what we hear in the news, and everybody probably is, buys the same storyline, and they put all the human passion, the same human passion that exists in the first group, they put it there too, except that their thinking is closer to the material, physical world that, that we wrote, maybe at the turn of the century, when somebody decided to say all these things about black people, or Latin people, or Arabs, or German people, or what have you, you know, they, um, they all stayed there and and they kind of continue to proliferate enough to where the the younger years of these people's parents were influenced by and they you know and then they um they were never able to break 
free to live the natural current and momentum of the uh, natural dimension to human existence and sort of re and and because when and see from that moment from the how ridiculous a lot of the things that we continue to believe how structured how enclosed how how limited how how limiting how um um archaic and stuck in its ways they are um but you know the thing is that as a as a humanity we don't we can't don't know how to embrace this um the notion that if it's not us nobody's going to change that education we have to consciously say that education was wrong we now understand that this is actually understood this other way and remove it <laughs> we we do do it um but the way we do it for things that are easy and that solve problems that would be too hard to fess up to and admit where the error actually is um for example we will uh try we're trying to rewrite sexuality for example to um have a physical world aspect grip on the truth about it. nothing could be more part of the natural momentum of existence and creation than sexuality um but for the physical written world the as the physical aspect of humanity to be better and to improve old aired beliefs to change them to discard them and start writing about something that's much closer much in in, in alignment with the natural world um we would probably have to face a lot of social problems that we have which result in our sexuality being the ultimate victim um because we see in nature this we see that when you add a a, a pollutant in the environment or when when you disturb you traumatize uh, the 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 family of uh whatever <laughs> mice or whatever you're uh, experimenting with you know and there all all it one of the things that these uh these studies in science show us that is that um um how do you say it? not chaos but affliction affliction trauma harm um disruptive interference it all seems to go to the egg the embryo the shell of the egg the the birth the fetus the way um it is uh the 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 new the new living creature is born um the or 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 perhaps the the pregnancy or the condition of the uterus or the birthing process you know the, it all seems to have a, a direct resonance into how we start we continue procreate proliferating pro no proliferating no, procreating yeah procreate um and so if we were to actually start getting closer to the truth about our sexuality what we would probably <laughs> be running into and this is because in uh, i you can conclude this because in general um you see our sexuality is full of chaos rape and um uh, homosexuality and uh, child pedophilia and things that may have origins in the natural psyche some that would produce something but so socially they get even doubt they get healed they get contained um but we see a lot of um we see a lot of problems a lot of chaos in sexuality and you know without getting too murky into how natural the impulse for pedophilia and how natural and how strong much stronger we should be socially for that not 
to be ever to not flourish as 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 a it's 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 dysfunction pedophilia is something that lacked in a person growing up that later they seek to compensate by receiving the love or giving the love or having the trust of innocence of the of uh, of a child and so it's it's you know it's not uh, an illness that is contracted from the air it's something that has to do with social psychological dysfunction and but without getting into all that because I'm not a doctor uh, it's easier to look at the fact that humanity is wanting to surgically alter its own gender to appear because it's not like we're saying okay ma'am you want to have a, a girl instead of a boy we can put this little drop at the, you know a week after conception and it will be a full-fledged male or full-fledged female and therefore designate or assign another gender no what we're doing is we're castrating and mutilating people and then giving them medicine and hormone for the rest of their life so that they appear and somewhat appear yeah appear and then their skin also appears and you know and yeah it's it's amazing it's incredible how uh we're assaulting the the sexuality of our own species um and so if we had all these indicators before now it's really obvious and so if we were to become smarter in our physical written intelligence or the aspect or physical material aspect of human civilization it means that our sciences of sexology and sexual psychology and what have you would start talking about homosexuality differently would start describing what homosexuality in the species is all about and um, you know it's not a civil right it's not something that happens to some people and not to others you know it's not something you have to try and and, and, and please God to make sure you don't fall into you know? <laughs> You know, it's just part of something that can happen to anybody. It's part of human sexuality, and it happens for reasons. And those reasons have to do with our society, with how what the physical part. Let's see, by my own definition, definitely, you know, all the and all the stuff that we put into the environment, and the the natural part, afflicted by our physical part, meaning the part that has to do with how we raise our children, but how that raising of our children in our family it has been conditioned by things that we have instructed ourselves to live by and believe as the philosophies of life and ways of treating one another and, and and dealing with our own children you know and also it's a combination like i said it's always the relationship of physical and natural aspects of human civilization are always together in whatever you want to talk about so it's um, wherever you go and, and even trying to explain itself and even you try and explain it. So instead, since that would be too difficult to, um, to start adjusting and correcting and realize what a mess we made by instructing ourselves things that were out there alone, purely on the material um, physical aspect we started saying that you know it's a choice a choice given by nature no a choice of ideology why not you know we can be a girl we can be a boy if you feel like a girl you know and so it's really out there as so far as um, there's a, a relationship between the aspect the natural aspect of of the world civilization and the uh, material aspect of the world civilization and it's like um, basically like you could draw it like two lines that start at birth and you know and they do this sort of thing they kind of do this and they come back in the end when you die there's nothing else to be said and nothing else to be br uh, breathed breathed I mean what's the past of breathe I, I breath bre breathed <laughs> okay, nothing else to breathe and nothing else to read. <laughs> so they they kind they come back at the end, 
and then, then they start together and then that journey which is a, the constant impulse and movement of life they travel together the one that doesn't change has a relationship with the one that's always living and changing which is the, the natural aspect um, and you can actually draw it um, you can make it like a diagram and so you, when the one that doesn't change the natural the, the material physical aspect of of our creation of human civilization starts going too far away from the one that doesn't change that goes towards death the natural aspect uh, this one below this starts starts becoming agitated and starts because it does the natural aspect of civilization does not want to live without the as the material physical aspect because we are the natural aspect of human civilization our invention our reasoning logic is part of this natural living body our capacity to do so is part of it um, it's not separ separable and so its origin never went away its purpose to serve us in our natural living for the natural purpose of living never goes away so for example if you take culinary um, the culinary arts of eating of cooking and and the food as the eating aspect of mankind um, you know if if we only have let's say we elaborate our vegetables and uh, we have you know pretty much our cultural customary habits and culinary arts don't depart much from going out to the field and eating the berries as you're walking along and, and digging out the carrot and eating it as you're walking back home let's say uh, which would be 100 percent natural existence they pretty much stay there because we use our hands to grind the food and we use fire to cook it and it never really you know and so we're able to always have a relationship to our hunger and when our hunger appears and when our hunger goes away and um, there's a relationship with how much food we make to uh, how much of that hunger is uh, is required is requiring how much that hunger is requiring as the, this line starts going away and we start freezing food uh, because we invented the refrigerator and we start mass producing it and this line starts going further and further away from its creator the natural aspect of of human civilization it's still close by because there's an there's an energy that always it's always about the same thing it never separates it's always because we created that to serve us but the the more it's serving us from its own crazy you know <laughs> ambition um to conquer the universe <laughs> to terraform mars <laughs> <laughs> the more it ha it creates um, disharmony in the species, the more it creates um, problems, and we see it. We see obese people. We see people that eat because they're bored. They don't get, can't tell anymore if something tastes good or what a fungus uh, or what a plant is. Some people look at you know. One of the things you learn when you go to smaller countries and the Mediterranean or what have you that. People sometimes go and they pick up a vegetable and they see right away why it's old or not good or or um, maybe will not ripen in time, you know, and stuff like that. We, we don't even know. We just kind of like buy the box already packaged. Um, so like this example, everything, everything that we create affects us through this harmony or disharmony this dis disharmonizing or or close to perfect harmony there's perfect perfect harmony there wouldn't be any separation we'd be walking in the savannas eating berries but we are no longer that species and of course this probably brings back uh, an opportunity to talk about theology and how is it that we have suddenly become 10,000 times 
different to any other living conscious being, social, socially intelligent being on the planet. Although you can argue that dolphins and whales seem to have a brain that befuddles us a little bit. It's not only larger, but its structure is, seems to be ambitiously developing towards something beyond us that we don't understand, we can't relate to. Maybe because we don't need to live in the ocean. But we can still say that we are you know, oodles away from any other living being in the definition of having uh, an intelligent capacity for the purpose of assisting ourselves. And this is probably the best definition for saying to determine what species is more intelligent. If a species can heal itself, cure its own wounds, uh, make sure more of its babies uh, survive, um, and so forth, um, you can determine that it's more intelligent. Now, when I said that, make sure most, most of its babies, all of its babies survive as optimally as possible, you got to wonder, how intelligent are we? Well, we are intelligent. We're obviously free to realize and to learn why we're not using our intelligence in the most optimal way this definition of intelligence would have us defined us define us as being intelligent and I believe I believe uh, the main reason is that we don't understand how we're affected by our own invention we don't understand what our capacity to produce this aspect or this other dimension of human existence the physical material written world engineering sciences when affect us as we are we are fused to living with it but we don't own up to the fact that we are its creators and it always affects us always and it always affects us to a degree that pulls us away from the state in which we would be equal to animals let's say the better, the more the more intelligent one but in the at the same level let's say the most intelligent chimp let's say would be this line <laughs> going down here right uh, if we were without this capacity we would probably still be uh, you know ruling or defend ourselves from any animal and be able to kill any animal and still be the most intelligent one but uh, there would be very little disharmony because the production of our physical world of our physical material aspect of human civilization and human existence would not exist so there what appears is the relationship and now we are defined by this relationship between the two and the quality of that relationship is the very source of why we argue and fight and um, contradict and betray and lie and manipulate and well that's a little more hard to explain you know meanness viciousness you know the, the willingness to hurt another that's a little harder to explain in so far as, but basically as far as the, the 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 harmonious environment for us to be the best that we can be given our human nature has to do with this uh, relationship between the these two aspects okay so that's it and at least it was only an hour <laughs> I always start off thinking it's going to be only 10 minutes um, but yeah I can't stop thinking about world situations and what's happening in Venezuela and um, you know and of course I'm always thinking about uh, what these guys want to put to sleep because they're just kind of you know, you just kind of give up on injustice sometimes. But anyways, and the Malvinas and um, the Falklands and everything that's happened in Central America and South America and Europe after the World War, after World War Two, and our relationship with Asia. I mean, all these things in the Middle East and, and uh, the wars in the Middle East. Um, you if you get a grip on how the dynamics between these two dimensions of human existence affect each other and understand what the lack of quality or what the 
the, the chaotic uh, instances in which, to give an example of a chaotic instance, um, it's, it's hard to explain because we also educate ourselves to accept things and we continue we continue uh, living in error um, but when revolutions happen basically for example um, I can't think of anything right now because I you know I, I'm really not that well studied but for example Spain is now demonstrating that they're a little upset that their president um, went along with the European community in saying and recognizing Juan Guaido as a, you know, everybody's saying it. He just, every single video, we're all, and, and, and our government in the States is just pretending that nobody is upset or crying falseness uh, against uh, selfishness against our government it's just we're going to do it we've got to do it and we know we we have the reasons or you know whatever but in any case so spain was um massive protests on the streets because they felt offended that their president would say we too along with all the other countries give venezuela only eight days to uh, you know and it, you can see the whole plan how they it was laid out it's of course maduro was going to say no <laughs> was not going to do that. It's like, so kiss my feet or else I will not forgive you. <laughs> you know, what is that? What is that? What is it like saying, you know, surrender and hum be, bow down to me. Otherwise, um, we will use military force. The man is, is just not that strong in his... Um, and his shrewd intelligence is, you know, to say, yeah, or there's some people, there's some leaders who might have said, okay, and then they turn around and do something else, you know. But um, what they got is what they counted on, is him, him ignoring that. So they could later, so, but they, he, they, America made the Europeans write the deadline of eight days and so when Maduro did not fulfill that and the Europeans say well we don't know we can't accept this we gave you eight days and I don't know what's going to happen now I mean this is all a plan concocted by one brain it wasn't it's not something that's unfolding although it's clearly designed as for as something that you know what do you call that um, Chinese or Japanese uh, artistry of origami that as you unfold something it becomes something else and, and you unfold it and all of a sudden, oh, look, it's it's a little village, you know. Um, it was all obviously orchestrated so that then the United States could say, well, you know, look look at the Europeans. They're upset because, you know, they, they try to be nice guys. They gave him eight days and he didn't fulfill uh, their request, you know. And so now people, we have reason to invade. You know, obviously it was all made to unfold a certain way. And so Spain was really un offended about this. Uh, the people... Not, not the president Sanchez, obviously. Um, although they did comment, we are obligated. You know, there was a sentiment. He knew that his he knew his people well enough to know this is not going to go down easy with us. Uh, but he did it anyways, and so you see all the pressures at work. So you clearly see. Uh, well, now that they they're manifesting and they want him to. Um, they don't say impeach. They want him to. To um, they want to depose him. Well, I don't know what the word in English is. Uh, they want to resign. You know, they want him to resign the presidency because they feel he's not a real leader. He doesn't have the the balls to to be truthful to his pe truthful in the name of his people to confront powers of manipulation wherever Belgium, Europe, England. Whoever is like you know giving the uh, the written instructions on how to do things, um, you know, and he does not know how to be his own man before that, and so now they just want to kick him out. And so you see clearly the 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 confront the the chaos I was describing about I was talking about the quality between the physical and the living 
um, aspects of human civilization. You have something that is being generated by the spontaneous living, the natural thinking, naturally reacting human mind. Uh, all revolutions have, you know, got tired of of a social injustice, but you know, we are used to thinking, well, they were smart enough to understand social injustice, and so that's why the revolution happened. No, they react to something natural. The natural laws of, of social life, of social human life, um, are about a lot of attributes and, um, and con collective communal social qualities of living that are just part of the species, that are what the species produce as a social environment. Um, our imposition of administration, country, you know, nation, government, affect those things and start either catering to them, uh, addressing them, or limiting them, curtailing them, trying to manage them. So the disharmony, like I was saying, there's always some disharmony between uh, in that relationship between the physical aspect and the human aspect and the living aspect uh life aspect um i should say natural aspect uh, but what we try to do because we're never separate one from the other is try to maintain that relationship but we've never been conscious of that relationship in human civilization ever we, this is this is like new. This is like a new. It's not a theory because a theory is something that could be possible. I'm saying it is this way, and we've never seen it this way. Um, if we had, we would always have be checking, like a doctor, what's the health of our relationship, <laughs> in the relationship between our natural aspect and our material aspect of human civilization we'd always be checking its health and see how much harmony and no, we never would have had any revolutions for example because um, we would have always been in tune and we would have actually used we would have looked at not used but we would have looked at the human uh, the, the speaking of the natural the expression the, the, the required the, 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 the felt requisites of the natural aspect to design the material aspect accordingly to conform it for its to fulfill its real purpose which is to assist us um, in a way um, ecological the ecological green sciences movement um, the self sustainability zero waste organic um, thinking, everything that has come with it, the philosophy of, of veganism and animal rights and uh, organic living and ecology, science of ecology, Gaia, these are, um, in a way, it's our first uh, social sort of political movement, science, scientific movement, to address the, the course of the natural aspect of human civilization to address it and and we are doing we are actually speaking of ways to be true to it to uh, address it to go by what is uh, but you know we we it's easy to do when it comes to uh, engineering architecture or food um, we're not very developed we haven't developed this movement yet much in the human the humanist relation um, in it, we would probably be much more intelligent about ourselves. If, if, if we had, we would probably be much more intelligent about ourselves, about why we behave the way, instead of judging and condemning and punishing and trying to force the other to be and behave a certain way, we, we would be understanding the species, we would be understanding why we react to the environment of the world or to the treatment of others and, and human civilization the way we do and so we would know how to heal or, or, or make it so that we can self-heal because all bodies are capable of self-healing. Every mind, just like our skin, closes up again and makes produces new skin, uh, our mind would have a place to go back to as well. Whether you're a thief or you're 
an arrogant, uh, insensitive bastard, or, or you know, and there are a lot of kids. We go into, um, we go into a place that is in the face of what we're living, and it's hard to talk about because if I suddenly say our homosexuality would be understood as something that everybody expresses one way or another, some people can actually take it to the phys to the sexual activity and um, um, you know but uh, we wouldn't have the uh, insistence on desiring and needing to always seek homosexuality um, you know to compensate something that the brain is trying to compensate for or, or when you know and and that to speak that way today is uh, as you probably are realizing as you're listening very difficult because if you sound like you're saying we wouldn't have homosexuality it immediately sounds like I'm somebody has something against people who are gay and I don't even see it as people being gay I don't even see it as uh, there are people who chose to be and not be gay I see homosexuality as an expression of human sexuality um, and if I were to um, clumsily have stated that and said there wouldn't be any homosexuality, what I would have probably meant is that society would be healthier and then so the occurrence of homosexuality would be relegated to maybe childhood experimentation until you got to verify and counter check against other aspects of your sexuality and so fell back to where you're supposed to be or or maybe uh, instances in which you approached it as an adult and you experienced it and actually felt what it's really about, which is sort of a, uh, a, a bipolar, uh, two things, two things. There is natural aversion and there is an impulse and attraction and it happens, this is a phenomenon of homosexuality, is that there's, some, there's a force that says go, 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 and, and all the pleasure is found and so forth um, and then there's also a part in the brain that kind of like, no that's uncomfortable no wait no uh, 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 little flags here and there and both of those together are actually what describe homosexuality in the human brain um, we don't have anything like that in science or sexology or much less in the civil <laughs> And, and, and Obama's pro-export homosexuality movement, <laughs> or Britain's, let's be fair, I mean, it's like this campaign by the English-speaking world. Um, because we, and there's a reason, I'm not being only mean and a jerk about it. There's a reason, it's because sexuality um, is... Um, uh, very difficult. It's very intimate. It's all. It, it has a lot of forces that have to do with intimate aspects of psychology, of personal expression, intimate personal expression. Yes, we can educate ourselves to be anything. We can educate us. We can lose a lot of fears easily, as homosexuality demonstrates. You get past those initial um, primitive, you know, natural aversions that th the mind has uh, for a reason, and sort of educators have passed it really strongly and before you know it we're wearing women's clothing in front of, in public or having sex in front of people and we can break these natural qualities and characteristics of sexuality but there's no denying that they're there and they're also there for a reason it, it's so that we're not promiscuous and we stick to the kids that we're raising with our mate and at least until we can see that uh, our, our child wants to go ahead and start its own family and so there's probably a, a a tapering away of a lot of these natural forces in the brain um, that don't necessarily reflect the institution of marriage till death do us part um, again there you see the relationship between the physical written world which is the idea that we had in marriage institution and the biological natural world which is about children about procreating about making children and you know bonding us giving us reasons to not let the other stray and keep them next to me and the children um, and then perhaps 
those forces not being there are so strong anymore. And that's what the natural design is more like. And there are people who, in the name of the of a, a newfound material written aspect, physical aspect, they're written, they're talking and writing about polyamorism to undo with with uh, so <laughs> with um, with marriage. Um, uh, but you know they ignore the part where the two parents is good that the, a man and a woman who are the parents of the child stay around this toddler and especially the first years and, and not confuse them too much with you know there's some leeway it seems that the species also evolved perhaps with uh, males changing and not the female so much rather but you know anyways but there, you know we're not fixed into a into um a, a, a fixed design. Humanity is resilient because everything that has happened as an exception by thousands of occurrences or millions of occurrences along our evolution has become part of the natural design. And so our natural evolutionary design does also include men that, you know, they, they not only, in general, yes, yeah, stay around the baby to raise him, but it also includes uh, women that are killed and disappear um, easily and uh, the child is raised by other another couple or men that die at war or or abandon or kill the children I don't know everything has happened in evolution uh, but you know it's the added the overall added amount of the totality of all those experiences as an average that more or less gives us a loose resilient flexible, versatile, though natural design that has a, a, an area of truth, an area of singular descriptions, description that can have variations and flexibilities and alternatives, but they, it's, a, it's usually, it always goes back. And so I, I, I brought all this up because I was talking about how the mind is also uh, the person that stole, the person that's in jail, the person because they, uh, you know, we understand a lot of things. We understand that the people were raped uh, as a child themselves, and, you know, what can you expect? They had no sense of respect or love for other people. Um, and yet, our institutions are completely, um, completely retarded as far as understanding its own creator. <laughs> it doesn't know how to understand this. what happened to this human being. Okay, I'm, I can organize this. I will make it easier for society to heal this person because there is a natural impulse in everybody and all society. Excluding somebody that hurts society is also part of it. But wanting to see that person heal is also part of it as much. So there are forces that give societies options, but our intellect and logical reasoning, this intelligence that makes us uh, more intelligent than animals, its aim is to take the best that we can be and nurture that. Take our better uh, capacities and try to facilitate those to, um, to govern the situations that could have been naturally less likely, but with the aided invention of our physical material world, we should, we're trying to, the world is trying to, in an ideal concept and its purpose, to help us cure faster, bounce back faster, not suffer hunger, not be covered by avalanches, not freeze, you know. Um, and so, once we concur on what the natural design is of the species, uh, we can then say, well, we do have actually the capacity to have people find redemption. There are ways in which we have always demonstrated that if the person feels that he has, he has been apprehended in his ill-doing towards others in society, but he's still not excluded, he's still loved and understood, they know why he did it, there's something natural that awakens in that person where instead of becoming resentful and begrudging 
as he's thrown into jail, um, or broken, totally broken and passive. He's, he's now an amoeba. He doesn't react anymore. He just lives like a little slave the rest of his life, never reacting. He wakes up um, um, with natural, with a desire to naturally compensate, to want to walk in the right. It's not easy because, um, for example, in tri tribal judgment of elders, yes, the, the guy that stole the sheep from the old lady uh, in, the, in the fringes of, and the edges of the village was apprehended by the neighbors and brought to the elders to uh, before council, let's say. And so there they are, they said, uh, oh, boo boo, <laughs> boni, tutanda, <laughs> we know you since you were a kid. You know, we saw what happened. Your, fa your, your uncle killed your father, raped your mother, and we, for we let you, we, we just let it happen. Nobody was there. We know why you never be able, you never were able to trust again, or, or you think that woman, you know, the auntie of the, of, of, of uh, the murderer of your mother uh, is related of the same tribe and so she deserves your anger and so they they demonstrate so also Ubuntu or <laughs> says uh, I don't know why I think of um, Amazon or African tribes you know I'm imagining in my head um, you know they um, he he cries and breaks in tears because he knows what he has done is breaking in in tears and uh, unsurmountable shame that doesn't let you allow you to raise your hand your face um, is one of the most natural strongest feelings of real natural redemption um, you know as intelligent beings, we it would behoove us to see our best optimal capacities to heal and regenerate from within ourselves and try to create societies that nurture that and fa we facilitate it with as least intervention as possible. That's what an intelligent institution would do that serves its own creator. Um, but Okay, so, so it's not that simple, right? Because the person has still been harmed and the harm, the affliction, the wound of his developing years is still there. So even though there is a, uh, a second wind in which you feel you're gladly, a natural redemption happens, uh, the, he wants to make good and now he wants, he says, I want to paint the, that woman's house, you know, I'm so sorry that she, I, I want to express my my gratitude for, for her forgiveness and what have you. Um, it doesn't mean that he's going to become a model citizen or even average citizen after this experience of natural redemption. Uh, and understanding that is all about understanding how badly we can be affected by society. Um, yeah, by a society that's ill, that's misraising, that's harming its children, that's not looking after itself. And... Um, so there we see a clear example of of the physical of disharmony and total chaos of destruction we take lives and incarcerate them and we do nothing that addresses our potential to to heal and and bounce back from uh, you know it's we do it where it's easy and this is where this whole thing started where it's easy we stick our hands and we we meddle we mess with what is easy in the case of sexuality, this is where I, where I had actually started on homosexuality. Why do we there find apparently a freedom in in, uh, in uh, addressing the natural aspect? In reality, we don't do it because we're trying to heal something that was disharmonious. Disharmon disharmony is what we're creating there. We what we first wanted was to better uh, to heal the pain we wanted to um, not suffer all that we were suffering uh, that produced 
homosexuality. And this is the irony. We never saw that. We were starting to. When, when uh, after the, the arrival in civilization of, of psychological sciences, sociology and psychology, near after sociology, um, we started seeing, oh, wait a second, look, there, his mother and his father treated him that way, and wouldn't you know that then he's going around acting like a boy, acting like a girl, you know? Uh, but then, tragically, <laughs> events had a different turn, and we convinced ourselves, maybe because psychology t could not go further. Now, it could not go further and go further on the right track, and started kind of going this way and that way and not quite going straight at it, which is the way we are raising our own children, which probably you know, puts the, the blame, the accountability on, on something so precious and so important and so intimately natural that it's almost unhandable to accept you are the one causing your child's homosexuality. Uh, you know, that's almost impossible to handle. And so it's understandable that psychology went this way and that way and started. Unfortunately, psychology didn't realize that homosexuality is not uh, caused solely by and initially nor um, sourced in the relationship of the child to its parents and its mom and all that uh, starting from the very start and it has to do with society because those parents are but a reflection of how our society tells us we can and should and do raise our children and so where psychology de uh, derailed is when it started focusing too much on on the on the parents' accountability uh, regarding homosexuality, this we're just putting aside all the environmental aspects and things that make in in biology make it easier for effects and influences to to have a stronger effect because of a biological um, uh, condition that makes them more impactful, more affecting, uh, more conducive to later want to explore and find satisfaction and reward if trauma it's it's a comp it's a it's an area where a lot of aspects merge as one you know uh, homosexuality it's uh, an interesting subject of humanity but where psychology so since psychology could not go there um, and you cannot there's it was like a race to find the pain kind of thing. It could not get there and resolve, turn the stone over and find out what it was about, what was actually causing it. Then the other side, sort of the civil, not the civil, but this, the person who's hurting, the person who's hurting, like if you have a wound, you will be the first one to tell somebody uh, please don't put your finger there and stay away from me. And you will also be the first person to ask for help. Both. So the people who um, were actually the, the recipients of societies and civilizations, uh, whatever that resulted in their attraction towards homosexuality were manifesting more homosexuality and wanted the world to know their speaking up and saying, I want to be gay in front of everybody, da da da. They're asking. And why is the, has the gay community so loud? There's, look at me, look at me, where is that? What's this look at me about? So you're asking to come to you because you have something that is not right and you count on society to, so that's why we know that society, that's a social situation and the mind actually knows it's a social, you want acceptance by other males, by women. You don't want to see yourself before all of women, before all of males a certain way. So it's the, the, the matter um, resides in, in, in a social argument, not in the individual or much less the 
individual accountability before a oh, powerful God, you know. It's, um, so, um, because they were also saying, but don't, t don't tell me I am wrong. I have, I have something I need you for, says the gay community. I want you to notice me and I want to be able to, you know, express all this. And at the same time, don't tell me I'm wrong. Don't criticize me. Also defensive, just like the person that's wounded. You ask for help and you also say, what? No, 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 no. Um, and so, as psychology could not get to the, the right place, which is the social comprehension of homosexuality, um, we took the matter into civil hands and listened to the ones that, because first, the wounded person, yes, does ask for help, but first he says, don't touch me, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, First, the social, the, the gay activities of Christopher Street and Wall, Stonewall and what have you were saying, let me, let me do whatever I want. In other words, don't touch the wound. But at the same time, but look at me. Right? And so, um, uh, da, 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 da. wait, I'm get lost. And so the civil, the, the civil aspect, police, you know, the deviating mistake was that instead of saying wait hang on a second we never we were never very smart about it in other words um, you know instead of saying wait sexuality is still about nature homosexuality and sexuality it's all there about nature we're not going to tell people uh, what who they can go to bed with and who not and what to express actually all that was kind of entertained but in the wrong way because no we didn't do that but what we did is don't say anything to them you cannot you cannot touch them they asked to not be touched don't touch them let them everything equal anything that is not equality means that you're treating them differently you're harming them you're attacking them let them just cry out and say and act anything they want to do let them leave them alone by calling it um, a right a right to express their homosexuality the legal or civil interpretation of that right for them to express homosexuality is based on assuming that homosexuality must happen needs to happen nature wants it to happen period last word there's not nothing else to say about it no understanding as to why is nature asking for it to happen no 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 that all is oh, we don't need to go there anymore and the psychologists who were the ones going there didn't make it sort of like the Amundsen Scott tale you know um, Amundsen apparently didn't get it but Scott got at was the one to make it back or something and so he gets the credit for discovering the South Pole or something like that Amazon got there but they died and so Scott got there later but he came back so he went or whatever so something like that um, psychologists uh, the psychologist approach which is the higher approach which is a more sophisticated approach didn't get there on time Christopher Street Stonewall won the situation in winning so, they turned it into, um, you know, they gave it a definition. In that definition, comprised in that definition, is the preclusion necessary because you could not say, you could not say, don't say anything to them. You could not say, you could not tell a parent, do not judge your own child's homosexuality. If you had not first precluded that it's nature's will that they happen no more explanation so what we've done effectively is killed our intelligence about social homosexuality by making it a civil right by politicizing by putting politics where it does not belong and human social behavior because social human behavior and collective discourse 
always will have the leading capacity of the natural aspect of human civilization. They will, it will always be able to discover what needed to still be discovered. With the material, physical aspect quashing that conversation and saying, we make it law, if you say anything to them, you're being a racist, you're being a, what is it, homophobic has become um, uh, an adjective of somebody who's bad and wrong and mean. Homophobia is actually that happens, something that actually happens in every human mind. Um, but see, we've, where we were actually coming there with sciences, psychology and, and biological science, neurology, what have you, uh, we pushed all that back to, no, no more advancing in that area. We're just going to make this, and so what do we, it's almost like the same thing with abortion. Abortion, um, instead of being sophisticated about it and saying, wait a second, what's happening here? What's happening here? The child is the right of both parents, equally, equally. Both mom and dad have the right to have that child and raise that child whether one leaves or the other one leaves. When the woman is pregnant, a woman has a child, bearing child, even though it's inside her, the design of the species is, is such that for that while, that moment, that inside of her, just for the, during the moment of um, a pregnancy, her uterus, is sort of shared, you could say shared property, not property, <laughs> we use words like that, it's like throwing a, a, a brick in a, in a china shop, right? Um, is, for, is, is the right of both mother and father. So if the mother, after she gets pregnant, decides, I didn't want this baby, I changed my mind. I don't, you know, I don't want it to be there. The father said, wait a second, that's my child. So the proper morale is that she ought to have it. She can later be forgiven and say, I, I was wrong. I didn't realize I did want to be a mom, of course. Uh, but the way we're going about abortion is just all wrong. You know, we have these definitions that don't, are not true to um, our bodies, our design. And ultimately, our bodies are the creators of our rational administration of ourselves. And so, and that means that they do it, like I said in the beginning, to serve and to optimize what it already is. So we're trying to help it be a better itself, not, you know, push it, obligate it to do or not do things. So, if the woman, however, however, the woman um, during her moment of pregnancy, yes, the, the child is in her womb, is more within the, the scope or the umbrella, which, how can I say this, within the the space of her protection, the responsibility of her protection. If our society wasn't so crazy, we would be more familiar with the protective woman that would never dream of, of aborting her child. Um, but let's say that for whatever reason, um, you know, she was raped, you could say, still, you know, the, ultimately the, the driving force is for the child to be born. We have to understand that. Nature wants that child to be born. Along that path, there are um, different ways in which things are capable of unfolding. Always for the better, given the circumstances. Always for as best or as good as it can be given the circumstances. That's the nature of life. Um, humanity invents his medical, its medical sciences and abortion. Um, 
And even before that, we had whatever roots. And so our intelligence was already, even when it was scientifically in diapers, we still had become the species where we want to affect our own body. So the morality of the situation is that it is the woman's prerogative to wish or not wish that child. She can prefer to not have it. She can prefer to give it away in adoption. Or if she knows of something that would put her life at, life at risk by introducing a root or a spice or a drug and kill that child, God said, boom, here, here's the rope. You're, you know, pushes off her boat with a rope in it. You are entrusted with the with the proliferation of the species. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you to take care of your uterus and what you have to do, you guys are alone in the world. You know, you're not sharing the world with another species. I'm here, I'm within you, I'm, I'm other places of the universe, I'm one, don't worry about me. I'm here before and after you guys will be there. Don't even worry about me. You have the rope, you decide, make the best humanity you feel you can. The woman is not alone. She comes to this earth with a man. When God says, make, do the best you can, she already is thinking, well, you know, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with the man who's all about building a strong world and taking care of us, so I'll, I should be all right, responds, <laughs> responds the woman with her freedom to God. So she has the freedom to abort it. Now, where does our morality start? Where does the morality that we can start talking about, just like I'm talking right now, and start writing something that is as um, true to our optimal expression and our optimal capacity to do with ourselves? Right away, what is unseverable is that that child is made of half of that of the male. So if she wants to not have the child, she would have to, by moral natural naturalness, in her own intuition. Uh, this is not something you would uh, you would find it in the mind of, of both the male and the female to consult. But I want to abort it. Now herein assaults what we educate our people, our societies, through social, civil, books, beliefs, history, passed down beliefs, what have you, the written or um, physical material aspect of human civilization, strongly right there starts having ideas to what to do at that point. But we know that she should consult. So that means that if the male says, rapist or not rapist if he was a rapist you know i doubt that he would have pride <laughs> he would turn on a dime and say yes i want to love that child he's probably hiding he probably wants to kill the woman he probably whatever uh, i doubt that he was looking forward to his son but what i'm saying it's important to span all considerations to really see clearly the whole road, the whole map. Um, the first thing the woman would do is approach the guy who maybe does, you know, still living with his parents and would, wants to roller skate and says, "Oh, my my babe just went to the clinic to have an abortion." It's not even thinking about anything. Okay, her, for her to approach that uh, guy and say, "Look, I want to abort it now." What kind of law would we have, would we want? The law should always be above the, the let's say, let's say, the law tries to be. It is not, it finds it hard to be, and it usually fails, but it attempts to be a higher guidance for society. Otherwise, what's the point of it existing? And the law has to have a wisdom and a knowledge about the species, about what is best ultimately for society and for the individual, that is the reference. And many people see it 
subconsciously as education. That's why when we said, when we proliferated things in law, like saying, um, you know, you can you can do with your butt whatever you want. You can live homosexually and adopt kids as a couple of males or females. We're actually teaching people also that you know we're proliferating it's something that was already a departure, a mess. It's incredible. Where we we have just gone off out there in the middle of this cold lake and we don't know where we are. Um, so at that point, the male she passes she passes half the ball to the male and says, I've, "I want to abort it." Now, in a healthy society, in a fully optimally fully expanded in its all its healthiest optimal inflation. The woman would have never wanted to. She, it's part of her body. To be pregnant is sort of part of fulfilling herself, right? So it's already uh, less likely that she would decide that she doesn't want, all of a sudden she doesn't want that baby. Unless, of course, she has been raised in a society where sex is an activity of fun and leisure and it has nothing to do with having children at all. Now, I'm not saying that sex does not have to be fun and leisure. <laughs> but in our mature intelligence and understanding about our desire to be um, promiscuous and leisurely sexual, we should always be wise and intelligent about what we're using, or what, what vehicle or what the what the body is providing for that and so handle it at that level at that caliber of uh, of what it, it really is and what it what it would normally mean and so um, and these things already do happen as, as I'm describing them they are already part of different areas at times in society um, and so the male that, so, but we're talking about the law and what should the law be the law should in the case that male wants the child and it's clear that he did want to be a father the woman should not be able to abort it because it's not only hers and we have to understand that in this we're both called to our highest expectation of moral responsibility for sexuality. Um, it's not about sort of uh, amorphous, not being judgmental or blaming or, or, or freedom to do whatever you want with your body. No, no, no. There is a reality uh, to the species mind and our natural psychology and the design of our of our of our society and, our, and how each individual manifests its design in that society that the law would be intelligent about. And so we're looking already at exceptions where one of the two, in the case that the male says, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I really didn't care if you got pregnant, I, it's not what I wanted, and admits it, and the woman still wants to have it, we already have all that, right? We already have how the, the law protects the woman who was left alone with the child and da, 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 almost excessively. Because it should be the woman's interest to have a father for her child. And right now we're treating it like like we're independent pieces floating about. Um, what we are really lacking is in male the importance law gives to nurturing and shoring up male leadership responsibility and accountability uh, the law gives for weak societies in which if men lose the quality of their sense of accountability responsibility in society for others there's nothing there that reminds him on the contrary, it's all about punishing, punishing, punishing. So you fall, and instead of somebody helping you up, helping you to get up again, you know, you boom, 
strung him in jail for 50 years because he just didn't know how to get up in time. So the way our law is structured, it, instead of making a healthy society, it gives a lot of space to the woman to sort of move around alone by herself, but very little to, to make sure that the leadership, which is what is most affected by the, the, the species, the being, the human being, by its um, inadequate material, physical, ill design to the aspect of human civilization so far, um, continue to be obliterated, you know, stepped on. Well, that is obviously the reason I'm making this is because to point out that we don't have a design that helps the species. We have a design that is like a tight jacket that ends up ripping <laughs> under, you know, under your shoulders and we still have to wear it and it's letting wind come in and it's just not, it's not comfortable. It doesn't uh, so give space for the species to stand up and be as strong as it can in its natural design. And that means men that are 50% accountable and in right. This is the part. You know, accountable, yeah, we can easily, okay, we'll punish the guy if he doesn't want to take um, responsibility for that baby. But where we're lacking is in, um, in providing the leadership for that male, so his worth, his sense. And, you know, I'm certainly not one to invent this discourse, this, this whole... Uh, there's been tons of books written about this, but our, you know that we we have weakened our society and, and we're being anim made anonymous by by an industrial substitution and you know and all these things and we just kind of read these books and yeah so we become a, a weak society and men are discardable and females want to be bosses and all these books have been uh, which. You know, bossing should be shared, <laughs> is what the point is. There's, there is a leader of the species, and the woman can also lead. You know, and they both can lead, but the, the male is supposed to be the one that really, you know, puts the paddle in there and, and cuts the ice, breaks the ice. And right now we have a different view of it. We see it not as something that is a joint complementation of two forms that are similar yet complement and together they're both leading society what we have is sort of a competition between right and wrong and bad and you know and, and what you didn't do that's good <laughs> what good you didn't do and bad a competition between those two things um anyways so that's that's it that's i'm done oh my god almost two hours this is unbelievable I don't think anybody's going to get to see this. Anyways, thanks for listening.